Hi, I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Such a pleasure to speak to you. Hi, nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you and talk to you. Um, maybe you could just kick off with a brief introduction to this film, Shiva Baby. I mean, completely original, very unique. Um, what gave you the idea for it? Um, and how did it make this journey from being a short into this feature debut? Sure. Um, so I was uh, uh, in my last year of university when I made the short film and I wanted to make something slightly personal so that I could do a good job because I didn't want to set my goals too high and be over ambitious, which I think a lot of film students can be sometimes. Um, so I, I chose this story and I wanted to sort of, uh, you know, have a character experiencing like two different versions of herself and having to confront the pressures of um, coming from her family and coming from her sex life um, in one setting and in one day, I thought it would um, be extremely uncomfortable, um, but also, you know, these were the anxieties that I was feeling at the time. Um, so I made that short in class um, and over the next two years after I made the short film, I worked on different drafts of the script and I, I worked with my friends from school who were my producers. Um, and I worked with Rachel Sennett, who's the, our actor, um, lead actor. And um, we did everything we could to raise the money, which took years and, and most of our energy. Um, and then we made the feature in August of 2019 and we finished it fully like post and everything just before the pandemic started um, because we were supposed to premiere South by Southwest, which was one of the first, I think, like big world events to be canceled um, because of COVID. Uh, so that's been the journey for, for the film um, so far. Yeah. And you were mentioning there, like this collaboration with Rachel, you've obviously got um, as your main character, Danielle. So, you know, obviously she's a comedian. She's done all sorts of stuff with social media. Um, so what was it like working with her and why was it so important to kind of get that casting right, to get this kind of dark humor that's through the, through the whole thing? Definitely. Um, well, I didn't know Rachel before uh, working with her on the short film. I'd seen her in other student projects and then in her own comedy sketches that even when she was 20, she was writing and acting in. And I thought she was really funny and she looked like someone I would run into at a shiva. She looked very similar <laughs> to my sister or my cousins. Um, so I, she, you know, on a student film, the stakes aren't that high, but she's so funny and she's such a good improviser and things kept changing. And she was so good at just rolling with new scenes being done and just rewriting the dialogue on the spot. And the film was much more of a dramedy before, like a, like a, a funny drama maybe. And, she just made it such a comedy. She put her own style of humor and style of comedy, her, a stamp on it and made it so much her own. Um, and that was really important for me to keep for the feature. I mean, it was important to keep Rachel for many, many reasons, but her comedic timing is, you know, in incredible. And uh, she's also just really good at, um, yeah, d uncomfortable humor. You're right, her social media is extremely sexual and, uh, <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I, especially for me, because I know she's dealing with, or was at a certain point dealing with her family being like, stop posting this, like, stop like <laughs> tweeting about getting fingered in an Uber. Like, um, so she, I knew she, she, she's now my best friend. So she'd definitely relate to Danielle having to like hide all this internal sort of sexual anxiety while like her, her aunts are like pinching her cheeks. So, um, you know, it just, it worked out very well. I think we, it was meant to be our collaboration, I think. And what I think makes it incredibly original is not just the story, but also like the look and feel of it, you know, this claustrophobia, um, you know, whether you call it cringe comedy, but another reviewer even said, you know, a symphony in the key of anxiety. So what, um, you know, how, why, and how did you want to create that feeling? And how important also was the score to that? I know you're working with Ariel Marx on that. So, you know, how did you want to, the look and feel of the film to be? I think I just was, you know, I wanted the audience to understand what Danielle was feeling. And I worried that because it was a comedy and also because 
she doesn't really get moments alone much or with people where she can speak honestly about how she's feeling. I worried that we were going to lose track of what was going on inside of her. Um, and I also wanted the audience to be interested in staying in the house. And I was constantly like, how do I make them entertained in a way where they're not like, okay, why don't we just leave? Because it, because the circumstances are so limited within one house in one day for, uh, for a film. So I wanted them to feel her anxiety. And I also just, you know, thematically wanted the audience to understand like what it feels like sort of to be a young woman and feeling all those pressures coming on to you and like, um, sort of fending them off, but also trying to appease so many different kinds of people um, uh, in one day. So that's why I, I wanted to sort of create that tension. And a lot of our references ended up becoming thrillers and, um, you know, psychological horror movies, um, you know. So I kept pulling things from my DP and it, we decided on a pretty claustrophobic look um, for the movie. Um, and then, and then that affected everything else. It affected, you know, the edit and our editor just sucked the air out of the movie. And there was, you know, ums or ahs, like everything just, you know, was was back to back. Um, and then definitely with Ariel, our composer, I, I wanted something anxious and string based. Um, and she, she was the first person that said, this kind of feels like a horror movie. No one else had said that at that point. Um, so that was really important, especially for the score to under, to really communicate what she's feeling. Cause I, I knew it was going to be tense with the close-ups and everything else, but I wanted something to make it very clear what we should be focusing on um, in the scenes uh, and because there's so much else going on. Um, so yeah, that's, that's why it was important. That's how I tried to articulate it. Yeah. And in lots of ways, the story is very stripped back. I mean, it does all take place in this one kind of particular setting, but there's so many, threads that pulled out, you know, from, you know, the tradition versus uh, independence, you know, the fact that a, a nuanced view of what a sex worker might be, um, the fact she's exploring her bisexuality, so what, uh, or, and her eating, you know, the panic <laughs> eating. So what do you think were some of the key themes and what do you hope people will take away? I think, <laughs> oh, there's, there's many things <laughs> from what you just said. I think the main thing, you know, I wanted to sort of communicate was what it felt like to be, you know, or feels like to be sometimes a young woman when you're realizing that your sexual power is not as powerful as you think. And it feels like the world's closing in on you because you're realizing you, you actually know you were right before you have no power um, uh, and you need to build up your self-worth. So I think that was sort of the feeling and art for Danielle I wanted to mirror from myself, but also other young women and, and make other young women feel less alone or feel like they can see themselves and their anxieties in her. Um, but also, yeah, I mean, it was very important to me to have a bisexual lead character. Um, that was a little harder to work in um, <laughs> um, without it being super expositional because sometimes it's hard to have a bi character because I was like, how much can I get away with in one day with showcasing, you know, her full, full her full sexuality. Um, so I hope that people can, can see that and feel good about it if they're bi. Um, and um, if they have any other, if they have a, their sort of her parents or her mom's perspective on bisexuality, maybe hopefully they understand it a little bit more. Um, and oh, there's 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 a lot, but you know, I, I think the main thing I right, was I, I just wanted young women and specifically young bi women to see it and, and feel seen. So. Yeah. And just finally, do you think, you know, we are working towards a bit more of a broad representation in cinema, like telling female stories, um, you know, kind of going into the sort of Jewish community, you know, these might not be things we've seen in mainstream film before. So do you think that your film is part of, a, uh, you know, walking, working towards some kind of aggression towards a bit more um, inclusivity and in what we see on screen? Definitely. I mean, thank you. I hope so. Um, I think that there's been a lot that's come before me that's inspired me more so in television, like with shows with like Transparent um, and even there's, there's just many others with queer characters and Jewish characters. Um, uh, so I hope so. I definitely think that some people have sort of asked me like, you know, what do I think about the, this trend in messy female characters? But I think that, you know, there've been many messy male characters, but we don't, 
talk about them as messy. So I, I hope that we can continue to see complicated women like we've seen complicated men and just see their stories as relatable human stories and, and not be like, whoa, she's a crazy, messy female lead. Um, but I, I do hope that um, there's more positive queer stories. I hope that there's more nuanced sex worker depictions that aren't you know, completely depressing, but also you know, not fake and, and happy and, and you know, um, flowery. Uh, and I hope that there's more bi characters. So um, I do, uh, I, I hope so. I don't know, we'll see. But it makes me feel inspired um, to see very culturally specific films and TV shows and, and seeing the success that they've had um, in the last even five years or so made me feel more encouraged um, to make sure the baby, you know, films that weren't Jewish were queer at all, but like Farewell came out the year we were shooting Shiva Baby and Rami, and they had such huge success that it made me feel really excited to tell, you know, sort of my specific story. And just very quickly, you've got a new project with Rachel again, haven't you? But a slightly different um, uh, genre, if you like. Yes. Yeah, um, her and I, uh, since we made the short film, started writing this feature that's uh, much more campy, broad, high school comedy, much more in Rachel's sort of style of, of sexual overt humor, um, less Jewish, not Jewish at all. Um, and um, it, we're really excited. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be like an all girl cast and we're very, um, very ready to make something not anxious, not as anxious. <laughs> All right, fantastic. Well, I can't wait to see that as well. And um, thanks so much for your time and for this really uh, wonderful original film. So thank you so much. much. I appreciate Lovely it. Lovely to speak to you. Thanks a lot, Emma. Cheers. Bye.